to my second home, to the US, as a student and someone who educates American students. We come to America because of American values that urge us to move. Yet, we do not forget about our roots, we cherish our culture, and we speak our languages. Today, my country, Azerbaijan, is under attack. But it's not just bullets that hurt. It's a massive, racist, Islamophobic propaganda and misinformation against my people and my country. But first things first. Armenia occupied Azerbaijani territory called Nagorno-Karabakh. The UN and the whole world condemned the occupation. Armenia itself does not recognize Karabakh as independent. On July 20th, the amendment number 99 was adopted by the House of Representatives in connection with the submission of the report by State Secretary of the Congress about the citizens of Azerbaijan and other post-Soviet countries resettled from their occupied territories and killed in those areas. It's a small and a huge step towards justice. As we all know, Armenia started military action against Azerbaijan at the border. On July 14th, when they opened fire on villages, a 76-year-old Azerbaijani civilian was killed. Armenia is home to Russia's 102nd military base. Over 5,000 Russian servicemen protect Armenian borders. Tovo's district of Azerbaijan, which is located at the border, is less than 50 miles away from Southern Gas Corridor's natural gas pipeline. By capturing the strategic heights in Tovuz, Armenian forces would be able to shell the pipeline anytime they want. The Armenian army has consistently resorted to brutality and violence against Azerbaijani people. A clear example for that is Khojali or Garadagli genocide committed by Armenian army forces just 28 years ago. The genocide ex-president of Armenia, Serge Sarkisyan, is proud of. Since then, three generations of young Azerbaijani people are growing under the sounds of gunshots. Yet, Armenia follows the same strategy of genocide, trying to wipe away Azerbaijani presence in Karabakh by destroying its culture and art, as if it proves their unjustified statements. Throughout the Soviet era, Azerbaijanis and Armenians used to live in Karabakh as next-door neighbors. However, by using terrorist organizations, Armenia managed to cleanse Azerbaijani people from the south of Armenia as well as Karabakh. Azerbaijan became the first post-Soviet republic to face refugee and internally displaced people's problems. Armenia refers to the conflict as a right to self-declaration, but People living in Karabakh are Armenians. Armenians have already a state with borders that Azerbaijan respects. They don't want Karabakh to self-declare. They want to create a second Armenian state. Couldn't they potentially do the same in any part of the world, in any other country? As if it's not enough, these people inside pro-Armenian senators, the ones who have a price tag on themselves, to provoke more and insult Azerbaijani people. This week, pro armenian senators introduced two amendments, number 49 and 50, that are designed to cut aid from educational and cultural exchange programs and redirect it to economic support fund for the demining programs in the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. But the demining program implemented by Howard Trust was deemed 98% complete for the last seven years. Yet, American tax dollars kept being funneled to the illegitimate entity until March 2020, when the aid was finally and rightfully seized by the US administration. Pro-Armenian senators spread misinformation about my country while scapegoating the Armenian aggression. Being a mono-ethnic country, Armenia has no values in diversity, while Armenians, Russians, Jews, Talish, Tats, Sahurs, Yudins, Lesgins are living peacefully in Azerbaijan. 
Today, Armenia tries to weaponize religion, which is unacceptable. While in Azerbaijan, you can hear prayings from mosques, Christian and Catholic churches, synagogues, etc. Just like any other country, the United States recognizes and supports Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and denounced the violation of international borders. Section 7069 of HR 2029 Consolidated Appropriations Act 2016 passed by U.S. Congress and signed by the President into the law in December 2015 prohibits funds from being made available to a government of an independent state of the former Soviet Union if that government directs any action in violation of the territorial integrity or national sovereignty of any other independent state of the former Soviet Union, such as those violations including the Helsinki Final Act. The UN Security Council adopted four resolutions. Yet, the United Nations cannot force Armenia to withdraw its army from the Azerbaijani territory. If the UN cannot solve this conflict on the basis of its own resolutions, the purpose of this organization in political arena is overrated. This organization has lost its credibility in the world's eyes. For more than 30 years, the pro-Armenian and majority Christian OSCE has been dragging our people from dialect to dialect with no clear idea of how to resolve the conflict. We are not calling for war or violence. We call for the end of our land's occupation. We want Azerbaijani people to be back in their home. We call for justice. For 30 years, official Baku calls for peaceful resolution of the Karabakh conflict with considerable autonomy for the region. The U.S. is a key player in resolving this conflict. Reject amendments spearheaded by the Armenian narrow interest groups. Force Armenia to end this war. Karabakh matters. Azerbaijani lives matter.